is Stephanie Pickard with Guitar Control, and today we're gonna go over how to solo in the pentatonic scale. So while you all filter in, I'm just gonna mess around a little bit and solo a little bit. So if you're on YouTube and Facebook, say hi. And other than that, let's get started. <laughs> Um, say hi if you're filtering in and um, this is the scale that builds mini careers so it's a simple scale it's a really fun scale um, and it's pretty easy because it leaves out a few notes so it's easy to kind of get to so let's go ahead and um, and, I, and it's very parallel so the way that you're gonna look at this it's gonna it's not so different I guess I'll show you it'll make more sense when I show you than say that but um, yes this is definitely many many solos are built off of this scale Many careers are built off of this scale. It is a great scale to know. It is a great go-to scale to have. Hi, Anthony. That's awesome. Facebook is good. If you're on YouTube, say hi. Hi, Cheddar Kumbau. <laughs> is that your real name? Uh, this is an ESP. I love this guitar. It's a, it's an LTD, but it's an awesome sparkle top. Um, they gave it to me a while back, and I just love playing it. It's super easy to play, so I really like it. Um, hi, Jim. Oh, that's so cool. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Jim said he just found out about these live streams recently and he looks forward to them every week. So that's awesome. Uh, yes, if you're just tuning in, I'm here. Hi, Jason. If you're just tuning in, I am here every Tuesday and Thursday. So at 7 Central. So these are topics sent in from you guys. If you have topics that you want to share or send in, please let me know. Send them in. You know, you might wind up in a video here or in one of our videos on our site. So if you don't know, on YouTube we have free videos daily. So these live streams, I'm here uh, twice a week. Sean's here on Wednesdays. And we have at least one or two new videos a day on our YouTube channel. So make sure you check out youtube.com slash guitar control. Um, hi, Charles. That's awesome. You guys are always from all over the place. It's so cool. It makes these really enjoyable. Um, yeah, so don't worry about it. Saying that uh, Jim is saying he knows a couple patterns of pentatonic, but that he just doesn't really know how to solo in them. So I'm gonna show you the one that everybody uses, the, uh, you know, hi Robert, the most common one. And um, let's get started. So also, obviously, you can apply these tricks and techniques to other scales. So, you know, how you write a solo in pentatonic has its own little certain go-to things, but, and you know, things that work better for it. But also you can obviously apply these skills and, um, you know, ideas to other scales. So let's check out the first position of pentatonic. So I like minor, minor pentatonic, but I just like minor scales in general. So, you know, these minor scales and major scales, they actually all correlate with one another. And when you change where you start from, you have a lot of the same patterns. So you might want to look into that too. If you're new to theory and modes and everything, I did a modes lesson. It is on Guitar Control's YouTube, so make sure you check that out. All right, so our go-to pentatonic scale. Oh, and also, sorry, I'll get to the playing. I am doing about 30 minutes of lesson and then a Q&A, so I will be answering questions at the end. Oh, can you guys not hear me? Anthony's saying his sound is down, so if you can't hear me, let me know because it says that my sound is all good. So, uh, if you can't hear me, say something. All right, so pentatonic scale. Anthony, uh, I'm sorry, Anthony, I guess I cut out of your computer for a little bit, but it's working everywhere else, and I'm glad it's working for you now. So, um, cool. Pentatonic scale, um, you know, most commonly used in blues and rock. Uh, cool. Thanks, Curtis. Most commonly used in blues and rock, but really, like, everything. So that's the cool thing about the pentatonic scale. Um, you know, my playing always tends to sound... Awesome. Thanks, James. Uh, my playing always tends to sound pretty metal, uh, no matter what I do, so... That's just me, but you can make this scale sound so many different ways. So that's what's fun about it. If you have your guitars, I'm in standard tuning, so go ahead and grab them. I'm just doing this in A. I always like to use A um, when I'm teaching on these things because it's in the center of the neck. And it's just visually, it makes a lot of sense. But you can take those same ideas, move them around B, D, uh, E. So remember, it's not, you 
don't ha- it's like you don't only have to play an A, but I just like that because I feel like visually it makes a lot of sense. So, um, all right, sixth string. I'm gonna go five to ten. Oh, sorry, five to eight. I don't know why I said ten. Five to eight. So I use my pointer and then I use my pinky finger because I'm skipping over two frets. So sixth string, five, eight. Then when I go to the fifth string, I go five, seven. When I go to the fourth string, five, seven. When I go to the third string, five, seven. When I go to the second string, five, eight. And then again on the first string, five, eight. So what I was saying when this one's very parallel, we know that the sixth and first string is, are both E, right? So a low E and a high E. So you can obviously play the same thing on each of these strings. One's just higher and one's lower. Uh, they are the same pitch, right? So that's what octaves are. So um, if you, you know, eliminated that string, it is a very parallel scale and I'll show you how. So it just makes a lot of sense. When I'm teaching someone just starting out, I'll often say one, four. So just meaning fingers one to four. If you were to apply one finger to fret, right, per fret. So one, four on the sixth string, one, three on the fifth, one, three on the fourth, one, three on the third, one, four on the second, and then, of course, same as the low E. So if you're new to even practicing scales in general, and remember, if you are advanced and you're like, oh my gosh, why are you showing me the pentatonic scale? Think about how you can apply this in your own lessons if you're starting to teach or think about anything like that. Um, okay. So, do you use modes as well? Yes, I do. I did another lesson on that, Wolfman. I just mentioned that, so go ahead and check out my lessons at guitarcontrol.com and at Guitar Control's YouTube. And if you guys haven't already, please subscribe to our, oh, thank you, Tony. So if, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So again, it's just youtube.com slash guitar control and tons and tons of free videos and playlists of all your favorite teachers. So there's a playlist for me, for Sean, for Robert, for John, so check it out. Um, and they have them even just by topic. So if you love metal, there's metal stuff, rock stuff, blues stuff, jazz stuff, so check it out. Uh, you can search by any of those things. But there's also a folder of these live streams. And um, I'm doing topics that are sent in directly from you guys every week. So thank you so much. What is my name? My name is Stephanie Pickard. Uh, cool. Oh, thank you, Jane. Um, awesome. So let's... What? I don't know if I understand Kenny's comment. Um... And why play? Are you asking me my strings, my guitar, my style, my amp, and why play? Like why I play? I play because I love to play guitar. Um, I'm using an ESP today, so it's my LTD. I have a Line 6, or sorry, I don't have a Line 6. I have a line, I had a Line 6 at our old place as a practice amp. But um, I have an Axe FX 2 and a Matrix preamp, so, um, or sorry, power amp. So I have my preamp and my power amp. So if you're new to that whole kind of thing, um, Axe FX is a preamp, which means it has all my settings and stuff, but it doesn't have enough uh, power to get out of the amp, so that's why you have to have a power amp. So it gives you more power. How do I pick a style? Um, that's a, a really weird question. How do I pick a style of music? I pick a style of music based on what I like. So that's what I do. Oh, how do you pick a style of the right guitar? I guess, honestly, it's what calls to you. So, and music, if you like metal, if you like, you know, if you like all the speed picking stuff, I always just picked what I liked. When I saw people do something like that, I was like, yes, I like that, and I want to learn that. But, um, you know, I like most all music, and I think the more you get into it, you start to appreciate other genres and other things, but um, you just pick what you like. I mean, if you like something, you're going to work at it, so that's why I do it. Do I have an official Facebook or Instagram? I do. So my name is Stephanie Pickard. I have an official Facebook that you will see. I might be, I can even tag myself. Um, here you go. That's me. And then all my Instagram and stuff is at Shreddany. Awesome. Can you happen to play also Les Paul's types of songs? I know a little bit out of context. But just wondering. Um, I mean, yeah. What's a, Wes, a Les Paul kind of song you're thinking? Like, 
Um, I mean, I like all the Doc Wilde stuff. This is kind of a Les Paul thing. I mean, uh, give me a song, I guess. We know you're a metal goddess. Do you ever just sit and play clean? Well, thank you. That's a nice thing to say. Um, I do. I play clean when I, when I practice. And I like to play lighter stuff, too. But, um, I don't know. There's something just about plugging in a guitar and having that cool distortion and stuff that I just think sounds really cool. It's always been a fun thing for me. And I don't know, it's so opposite of my personality that I think that's funny, I guess. It's probably my outlet. I'm just not a big scary metal person, but I like to play scary metal stuff. Um, all right, so back to our subject. Uh, Jim, you messaged me on Facebook about online lessons. I don't know if I got that. So please write me again and I will let you know. It should just be Facebook. Um, but I am accepting students, so definitely write me. Um, somebody wrote me on LinkedIn, too, and I just wrote you back. I'm so sorry. I do not check that site very much. So that should be it. Or it might... I think that's it. And just Stephanie uh, Pickard. So cool. Thank you. Uh, Mike, let me think about that. I usually... I like to speed pick. I'm not a huge legato person, but I do think it's cool. But I can't help it. I love picking. Um, I just like the sound of it and everything else. Hi, Stephanie. Are you doing an original solo or a cover? I'm just playing, so original. All right. Let's get back to that. Pedal of choice. I have all of these really awesome Dunlop pedals that I am going to be doing videos of that I want to. So I'll let you know then. Okay. I do really want to get into the whammy pedal, though. My fiancé does that, and I think it is the coolest thing. Um, but it isn't something that I've been doing a lot. Hello, Dave. Hello, William. All right, so back to the pentatonic scale. So even if you're just sitting down to practice it, just make sure that you're alternate picking. Um, that's what I like to do. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And the other time I was doing kind of like a sequence of three thing, I wasn't doing one, two, three, one, two, three, but I was doing like counting the string as it, the sequence, I guess. So one, two, three. So those are also really good ways to practice. Um, sequences of three mean I go up, three, back one, up, two. So that completes three again, right? And then um, you can do it with just one note, or I did it, like I said, with a string. So those are really good ways to practice the scale in general, and you can kind of throw those into your solos too. Um, what's up, Tony? Just doing a lesson. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm from California too. Um, okay, cool. So the go-to things that I would say in the pentatonic scale, also learning other patterns helps a lot. Um, and like I've said before in any kind of guitar thing when we talk about it, what I like to do is, um, awesome, thank you, Emil. What I like to do is kind of, <laughs> sure. Um, so what I like to do is, I like those like typical pentatonic licks, but I like to make them my own. I also like to grab at least a little bit out of other shapes sometimes. So we've talked about seeing the scales both ways, up and down, like this way too. So what I like to do is just grab at least one little note too. So what I mean is if I'm here on the third string, so in our pattern, I would just be playing five, seven. I'll go a whole step out. And I just kind of like that. And also, like, different techniques I always try to, you know, um, anyone ever thinking of doing a video on setting up amps and pedals to get good sound? Yes, they have. So I would keep asking for that because I know that there is interest in that. Um, also, sorry, his question is, has anyone ever considered doing a video on setting up amp and pedals to get a good sound? It is a great topic and it has been discussed. So we'll see if I can get that. Everyone can't, can't wait to get it. Digging Gajur right now. can't believe it. Tony, you should check out um, my fiance's band if you want to hear whammy stuff. I'll give you the name. They're really good. He's always on my Instagram too, playing. So if you see that, we did the Star Spangled Banner thing, and that was kind of funny. He did a really cool whammy line in that, and that always makes me want to play it. 
All right, so our licks. I like the double stops. So I always like those. And we just did double stops, so that's cool. So double stop, if you remember, if you were here, if you weren't, is when you're holding down two notes at the same time. So I'm using one finger, holding down two notes, similar to what you do, remember what I told you, in an F major chord, how, you know, you're arching these two, but you're barring. So it's just barring two notes at a time. I like to also bend it. So that is what I showed you um, earlier this week. I like those licks. I also really like that Zach Wild thing. But when you speed it up, it's really cool. So practicing it slow. Five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Oh, cool. Yeah. Here you go, Tony. I wrestled a bear once. Or they go by I Wabo. Go. Awesome. Uh, that's cool. Oh, that's really cool, Tony. Then of course you love that. Um, I'm marrying Steven in like a month and a half. All right, so let's go ahead and do some more of those licks. So cool. Um, hello. I don't know if I can say that username out loud, but hi. All right, so pentatonic. My favorite thing about pentatonic too, if you're creating a solo in the pentatonic scale, is um, oh thank you Cheddar Kung Pao. Um, the my favorite thing to do in pentatonic is bends too. I think a pentatonic solo with a lot of big bends is really cool. I also think improving writing your own solo techniques is you can limit yourself too. Um, that's really cool. Can I demonstrate a whole 15 second to 30 second solo with the, the position one? Sure. I'll set my timer. I hope I can remember my solo though, so that'll be interesting. I improvise a lot, and I actually really love improvising, and I've also told you guys that it's a really good thing to do, so I would also do that. You know, you can even just record yourself. But if you're gonna just write a solo on the spot, usually you wanna pick a theme like or something. So let me, I'll just kind of mess around and we'll see what, what happens. All right. So um, my solo, I just kind of went for it, but um, I remember hearing Greg Howe talk about this and he was like, improvising is taking all of these licks, so you practice and practice practice and make them your own. But what I like to do about it, he kind of acted like there is nothing in improvising, at least the way that I heard it, but I think that there is. I think improvising, you should take what you know and mess with it. That's what I kind of like to do, like maybe tap a random note or slide or do something kind of unusual, especially when you're practicing alone in your own time. Do I have a personal choice brand of guitar? Uh, yes, I am sponsored by Menard Guitars, so I play Menard Guitars a lot. I have a really cool custom, but I don't play it on these anymore because everybody complains because um, it's it doesn't have fret markers. But I do miss it because I have that whammy bar. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you, Jack. That's really nice. Play a beat and play with that. Um, yes, the pentonic scale is a lot of fun. It's really, really easy. So, or not really easy, but it's easy compared to the other ones because it just kind of lines up um, in a really nice way. And it's a good scale if you're just starting out too. So it's a good way to just kind of get get into that. Um, grabbing a note from the minor scale outside the pentonic is one way to add flavor to your solo. Yes, or incorp incorporating blues notes too. Like the whole... Even a little bit of like the Dorian stuff, so like the. I 
I like to kind of choke the notes too, and a choke is kind of when you stop it abruptly, right? So like the... I like those kind of things. I like anything like... I also lately have really liked um, dropping it in my bends, so the ones where you, you're muted kind of come down so you can have your volume off or you can have your volume on but you're dropping into it so I think those are really cool but yes it's all about bringing in whatever you can to kind of express yourself um, <laughs> thank you <laughs> James said I should just use my guitar anyways but it isn't the best for teaching other people uh, it's not pentatonic, so it, it can be a blues note or a passing note. So that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Robert, if you just logged in, we're using... I also think a really a good way to write a pentatonic solo, so um, back to, you know, the beginning. Thank you, Alex. Um, is finding a theme, and it can be simple, just a... So whatever you want to do. So that would be taking a theme, playing it again, a little bit different, either escalating things or coming back to it and then going crazy. So that's a pretty basic way to write a solo. Just a, you know, and then, a, and then kind of escalating it. Or however you want to kind of end it. So that's a really basic way to write it. But, um, a couple of things that we were talking about. I like big bends in my pentatonic. Obviously, I'm behind on all of that. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I know, I'm trying to talk to a big range of people in all different levels. If you're behind that, that's okay. That does not matter. Um, thank you, Mark. Uh, Diego, that's a diff different language, but I think it was nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, cool. So, um, yes, I, because we are actually almost done, I'm going to throw out what I'm doing. So the things that I really like are these double stops in my pentatonic solos. I like that classic lick. But I like to make it my own. I love vibrato and bends in pentatonic solos and in solos in general, but there's just something about putting a little bit of extra attitude. You know, a big bend would be your unison bend. Or just bend. I think repeating licks in pentatonic always sound pretty cool. You know, I was just going. And vibrato. So big bend, what I'm saying is bending. Making it kind of the star of that moment. Um, that's what I like. I like a lot of bends. Um, cool, sorry. I just made sure it was And I like, I obviously like the little spooky people. Too. So either the. So I was showing you guys this one, but I also like going. Um, all right. So um, that is kind of what I like to do. Big Ben. <laughs> that is true. See you, Tony. <laughs> Bye, Mike. Um, well, big bend probably isn't a technical term, so I think I confused you, Mark. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I guess it is. Like, I would consider when Jimmy Page uh, bends like crazy, those are big bends. I mean, holding out for a sustain, adding a ton of vibrato, adding a bunch of feel. So that's what I really like. How do I do my pinch harmonics? I get asked this a lot. I absolutely love pinch harmonics. I think they are so cool. I do them without even thinking now, which I guess is good and bad. But what I am is I'm flush with my finger. So when I make that noise, I'm actually hitting my thumb and the pick. So it's not just one or the other. So, and the best way to learn, and I know this isn't gonna be a popular answer, is to go in a room and 
ignore the universe and just take your guitar and mess around because they actually sound different too. A little Van Halen kind of thing. They sound different everywhere you play them. So that's not something you need to really analyze, but I mean, I'm sure the, you know, the greats do when they're writing their solos and stuff, but it's not saying that everybody noticed it's a very guitar player thing, but you just need to kind of get that noise. So it's my, it's hitting my fingernail, the pick, and then my thumb. And sometimes I add a little bit of vibrato too to that note to really make it kind of pop out. So uh, pinch harmonics are a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, with the fastest bend I can do. Oof. They're harder when they're up. Or I guess. But they also don't sound that good when they're really fast. So, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend playing them that fast. I like speed picking bends. But I like to kind of, you know, make my pentatonic stuff sound a little bit different too. It's probably more metally. So when I used to play, um, I used to play in this girl band that was like an all-girl band that did a lot of like ACDC type stuff. And um, I was a little bit more, I love ACDC, but that wasn't my like go-to. Uh, what was the YouTube channel you mentioned earlier? Charlie, I believe if you were talking about when they asked about me personally, um, I'm just shredding on everything. Um, or Stephanie Pickard. But where I was sending you guys, someone had asked me that, so I'm not sure which one you're asking, but I was recommending you go to Guitar Controls YouTube. So youtube.com slash guitar control. So check that out. Um, that's the sound that I'm looking for with good sustain and harmonic, but crunch at the same time. Yes, that is like my thing that I love. So I, I don't know. I do like to play clean. I do like to practice. I don't always have to play with distortion. I write songs on acoustic too. But there is just something so cool about just, I don't know, cranking up and going crazy. So I usually use on my Axe FX FOSS Lead 2, so FAS Lead 2. So that's what I'm, I'm doing. Um, oh, as far as in steps, I mean, I guess I can bend to whatever step I need to bend to. Unless it's really, really crazy. I think two and a half is a pretty big stretch, though. Uh, thank you, Charlie. That's awesome. Hi, Kip. Um, cool. Do I play classical? A little bit. I probably don't play classical that makes classical people proud, but I play, like, neoclassical, I would say. I like Yngwie and stuff like that, and I've learned classical um, from time to time, but I was not classically trained. So it's, like, metal classical. All right. We are actually almost out of time, so I'm gonna answer all these questions. How do I get really long sustain? Uh, I don't know if I understand your question. I understand that question, the one after it. Can I help your daughter do soundtracks on guitar? Um, give me more information. So um, let's see, how do I get really long sustain? Yours fades out. It's all in your hands, so it's keeping your hand on the guitar. And there's a really big difference too between putting a lot of pressure down to get that noise like I think people think it's a strength thing and it's really not I mean remember a guitar string weighs how much so it's not that kind of a thing but it's just having that pressure and just persistence I guess so just make sure you go for it just keep that pressure down but it's not necessarily how hard you're pressing it's just pressing hard enough so I've talked about this too. The way that the guitar is, when we actually get a noise, is when the string touches the metal. So when we push down and you see the string hit both of the actual, that's what a fret is, it's the piece of the metal. Um, you know, we just kind of refer to the box as the fret, but it is the piece of metal, so just push it down just enough and you'll get that sound. So it doesn't have to be straight into the wood like a lot of people think, um, just into the metal. Uh, but yes, Gladys asked me, Give me more information on your question so that I make sure I understand it. All right, before, um, <laughs> I don't know, is that a weird? Oh, um, okay, so 
I am going to, before we switch over, it is lesson time is done, but before we switch over, I'm gonna give you guys a discount code. So for hanging out with me today, this is for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. This is an awesome DVD. It is all about playing from the heart. So it's really about the player that wants to have their own voice on the guitar. So for hanging out with me today, this is for you guys. So thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate seeing you guys from all over the place. Oh, thank you, Jane. That's very sweet. Um, uh, Jeffrey, I can only see when you said, but it was fretless. I can't see anything else. Um, I only see about four comments on Facebook at a time. So if I go to YouTube, mm -hmm. I miss you. So uh, check out our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. Um, let's see. Check out our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. Of course, Jose. Um, can I inbox you? Yes. Gladys, just write me at Stephanie Pickard or at Shreddany. Oh, it just came up as my name. Okay, so yeah, of course. So, um, sorry, I got so distracted. So this is our, the Facebook one goes so fast. So this is for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. This is for hanging out with me today. This is all about playing from the heart and finding your own voice on the guitar. So not just trying to sound like anybody else. And I've talked about this many times. I truly feel like I got so much more out of the guitar when I, oh, thank you, Kip, that's really nice. I really appreciate that. I truly got much more out of the guitar when I started to have my own voice on the guitar because there's just something totally different about it. You all of a sudden, it's so much more rewarding and it's just, I don't know, it, it's just so much more fulfilling. So, I mean, I guess that's selfish, but it is a lot more fulfilling. So I'm gonna press this down there for you guys. So this is gonna cover three things. It's going to cover your technique. So all of the speed picking stuff. Mount Legato. You know, vibrato, legato, hammer-ons, pull-offs, um, speed picking, sweeping, those are all techniques, right? These are all the things that color what we do. So um, then it's gonna do fretboard knowledge, so your scales, your arpeggios, your chords, and then hand-brain connection. So getting what's in your head out of your hands. If you are the type of player that goes to sleep at night and you cannot get the music out of your head, through your hands, this is for you. So make sure you check this out. You'll get a discount code for hanging out with me today. And um, yes, thank you. So make sure you check that out. This is, you know, not something that's normally taught. Usually it's how to play like somebody else. So this is not how to play like somebody else. This is how to play like the person that you want to play like, like you. So getting your own voice on the guitar. So now I'm gonna answer some of those questions. Um, thank you, Gladys, of course. That's really cool. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to answer some questions, and then I will see you guys next Tuesday. Um, oh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on on YouTube. I'm getting married in a month and a half. Um, I'm sorry if that makes you unsubscribe, but that's creepy. Don't do that. <laughs> so um, I'm going to tape my video, my wedding, so you guys can see. There will be a wedding tape. I'm sure it will be on the internet, on social media. Um, I'm with you, Steph. I'm also distortion nut, and I just love the grit and sustain. Yeah, there's just something really fun about it. Um, it's, you know, you have to control distortion, too. So a lot of people act like distortion is something to hide behind, but actually, um, distortion can make you sound quite awful if you are not controlling it. So it really depends on what you're doing. You don't want so much that you're playing as cloudy and it's, you know, like crackly. I don't really like that kind of distortion, but I like the really smooth... Um, kind of sustain and just, I don't know, rock sound. To me, it's just so cool sounding. So, um, and that's true. You guys have been here following me for months, and I appreciate that so much. Uh, thank you. That's really cool. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Neoclassical. I mean, I'd have to say Yngwie. Can I do an example of harmonics when you lay your finger across the actual fret metal. Yes. So Kevin is asking about, you know, there are a couple terms on guitar that can get confusing if you are starting out. So like I had said, a fret is actually this piece of metal. Like if you got your guitar refretted, you would get all these little lines, these pieces of metal. Those are your actual frets. You would get those taken out and redone. Um, but on the guitar, if someone said, hey, play the seventh fret, that's... 
the seventh fret, the seventh space or box, however you want to think of it on the guitar. So one, two, three, four, five, actually in between two frets, right? But that's how that works. So, and there's different kinds of modern modern harmonics like this. You know, even in riffs. There's harmonics like that. Um, and then there's also harmonics like this. I kind of like them with a little whammy though, but those are harmonics. So what I'm doing there is I'm just like, honestly, just barely touching and then I lift up. So in that case, I barred all across the fifth fret and I lift it up, or you can do one at a time. kind of fun to throw into stuff sometimes. They are a little, I guess, dated a little bit, but I like to try to bring them back. So let's try and bring them back. Maybe you guys can help. So I think they're pretty cool. Do I write my own solos out on paper? Sometimes. I record more. So like lately I'm working on a solo album and I like to record. Um, I usually have to relearn my stuff though, so I probably should write it on paper. I'm so used to writing things out for other people. Um, that I, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, but if it's something really hard, I will. Um, all right, let me check on Facebook. Uh, of course. Thank you. My next live video, Jane is asking when I will be here next. I will be here Tuesday. So Tuesday at seven central, make sure you tune in and, um, I'll be there. So I'll, and they're all topics from you guys. So thank you again. If you have a topic or idea you want me to do or somebody else, leave a comment. And if you're on YouTube, when this video processes and it's on the site itself, um, go ahead and leave a comment and uh, make sure we see it because the chat will disappear. So I guess it does kind of look great if you're on YouTube and you don't see any of the questions. It probably looks like I just talked to myself. Um, pinch harmonics, I just went over. Uh, that's cool. Do, how do I memorize songs? Uh, my best advice for memorizing songs, uh, the best thing for me was actually listening. Uh, especially when I was younger, I tended to be really excited to just like pick up something and go like as fast as possible and, and I would want to do like whatever I wanted to do. Um, and as I've matured as a guitar player, I hope I'm still, still trying to mature all the time. I like to listen more and it actually helps me even more sometimes because you won't notice things. And I remember my teachers saying that to me when I first started out and thinking like, oh my gosh, you want me to listen? Like, no way, you know? And, I'm sure if you guys have ever been in a guitar class with other guitar players, you can hear everybody noodling and whatever, and they're actually missing so much stuff. So listening, I guess that's a good lesson for all of life. If you're not really listening, you're probably missing out on quite a bit. So listening, um, I've said this, you know, to you, I've, I did the Iron Maidens thing years ago. They asked me to fill in for something and it was really late notice. Somebody had dropped out and, and I had to fill in, um, and I had 17 songs to learn in a week and a half. And Iron Maiden is not the hardest thing in the world, but it's certainly not the easiest. And to learn 17 of anybody's songs is not, you know, great. So, um, in that amount of time with a job and everything else. So, you know, uh, well, teaching guitar, but it's still a job. But, you know, when you're doing all that and you're already playing all the time and everything. So, uh, my biggest thing was listening. I'd put the song in the car and I would listen to it all the time. And then you really know what you're doing. So, I would do that. That's awesome. I think that's very cool, Gladys. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate that. All right. Do I use a loop pedal? I do. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, part of me wants to be like Ed Sheeran. I think it's so cool. He's a one-man band. All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Again, check out our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. I'm going to give you guys this code one more time. So this is for how to play what you want to play from your heart. This is not for somebody that wants to sound like somebody else. This is all the concept of really, how did Jimi Hendrix become Jimi Hendrix? How did the greats become the greats? So, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan, how did he become Stevie Ray Vaughan? Eric Clapton, none of these people sound just like one another, right? They might have similarities. They might both be bluesy. You know, Jimmy Page, uh, Lexi Leho, Paul Gilbert, Steve Vai, all these people have their own voice on the guitar. Um, oh, 
it's weird. <laughs> Probably someone didn't like what the guitar players I said. But you should. They're all really good. So this is all for how to play, how you want to play. So not becoming somebody else. This is more of a concept. So make sure you check this out. Covering technique, fretboard knowledge, and hand-brain connection. So this is for you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will be back next Tuesday. So stick around. I'll see you guys then.